These are kelp forests, the cradle of the ocean and an essential element of our coastal ecosystems. And for us, they form a crucial part of our ambitions for marine rewilding. I wanted to start this video by showing you what it's like to free dive through a beautiful, amazing and wild kelp forest. However, in my, in my search for such a beautiful kelp forest, all I found was scattered individuals. And that is because these forests have become quite rare. So this is why for the last two years we have been cooperating with Sea Forester on a project that aims to bring back these lost kelp forests. And now we are finally ready to commit to something concrete, which is why we've put together 26,500 euros to build our very own little kelp factory. So now at this point you might be wondering, Dart, why do we need more seaweeds? They, you know, they stink up the beach, they get in your hair, they're super annoying to swim with. Well, in this video, I'm gonna try to explain to you why we think they're really important and why we think they are worth having. And I'll also run you through our kelp restoration trial, the results from the trial, as well as this new project that we are really excited about. Kelp forests are what we call ecosystem engineers because they create habitat for a variety of other species. They provide food, nursery areas, and also shelter during storms. From a human perspective, they are a carbon sink. They improve water quality, attract recreational diving tourism, and help stabilize local fisheries. They are found on rocky cold water marine coastlines on all major continents except Antarctica. However, in many places they are disappearing due to a variety of threats such as the case of sea urchins in California. Focusing on Europe and in our project area in Portugal, the causes for the decline of the kelp are not fully known, but we do know it's disappearing. Some of the main issues are herbivory, which happens when the mix of species changes due to a lack of predators or another disturbance to the coastal ecosystem, which leads to more kelp being eaten. The growth of turf algae, which block the young kelp from settling on the rocks. Damage to seaweed canopies through fishing. Changing water temperatures due to climate change. And pollution from rivers and coastal runoff, which blocks the sunlight needed for photosynthesis. I will touch on how we will get around these issues later in the video, because first I want to take a look at our restoration trial. Tiago is the mossy earth biologist who, in addition to other projects, manages marine rewilding and kelp forests. We've been running this project together with Jan and Inish, two marine biologists from Sea Forester, which is an organization dedicated to bringing back wild kelp forests. The goal of this trial was to understand whether the spore back technique worked and whether it worked in a specific location in Qashqais, which is an urban area. When it comes to results, well, it didn't work. The areas where we deployed the spore bags did not develop any kelp. There might still be a bit of hope for spring, but the chances are slim. We believe the main reason for the failure of this technique was the turf algae, which made it difficult for the kelp spores to attach themselves to the rock and start growing. It seems to have done so even though we scraped it off at the start of the trial. So remember, this is a trial for one technique. It failed, but that is the point of doing trials. You learn and you iterate, and that is what we are doing now. And this is where green gravel comes in. This kelp restoration technique originated from a group of researchers in Norway. Essentially, it aims to adapt seaweed cultivation techniques and use them in kelp restoration, allowing this work to be done at scale. It is also a great solution to reseed turfed reefs by circumventing the lack of available rock surface by deploying the kelp with their own small rock. The goal is for the kelp to then spread and attach itself to the reef, thus reseeding the forest. The process is relatively simple. Grow the kelp on pieces of gravel in a lab and then launch them at the desired site. You don't even need a diver to deploy it. So then, the next question was, does this work in Portugal? This is where our second group of partners in this project comes in. João and Álvaro, from the Instituto Politécnico de Leiria, or IPL for short. And the labs at IPL are unlike anything I've seen. They do all kinds of super interesting research on marine ecosystems. While our sporeback test was happening, Sea Forester set up a green gravel trial in Peniche. They grew some green gravel, deployed it, and it worked. Check out all these beautiful kelps growing on the gravel. 
and then how much they grew in just a few months. This is a game changer for us. So now it's time for a bigger experiment. One way that you can think about this project is as if we were just learning to plant trees on land. In recent times, this latest experiment has managed to plant hundreds of trees. And now we're looking at the next experiment, which is to plant thousands of trees. Not yet millions. Millions will be in the future, hopefully, but thousands. And that's the stage that we're looking to get with this project. Again, I have to remind you, this is still a test. It is a test at scale, but it remains experimental. So here's how this process works. The seed stock is grown and kept in a phyto chamber, and at the start of each batch, this stock is sprayed on the gravel. From then on, essentially, the modules run almost on their own in a closed system. The water starts from this container, then it passes through a chiller, so it is at the correct temperature, then it goes through a UV filter and into the various trays. This is where the kelp is growing on the gravel, under the LED lights. The water then runs through collection pipes, through this filter and back into the initial container. To get the money for this project, we put together a mixed fund, with money coming in from our Mossy Earth members, as well as our wonderful partners at Not Just Travel, Get Set Higher, Unifrog and the World Surf League. We are building five green gravel modules that will have the capacity for 86 trays, with about 200 to 400 rocks in each one. We should be able to produce three to four batches per year, and to keep up with the running costs of our little factory, both Mossy Earth and Sea Forester will be gathering funds to use for this purpose. On our side, we'll be using the regular contribution from our members, and also from other partners that might want to help restore kelp forests. So if you're not yet a member, be sure to check out mossy.earth to learn more. I got Alvaru to show me how the kelp is growing on the gravel under a microscope, and it is really fascinating to look at. This is their initial stage, and here you can see a tiny kelp, and then here how much it has grown in just 15 days. So they're growing really fast at this stage. Eventually, these will be proper kelps, ready to be deployed to the ocean and start our big experiment. The next step now is to finish building the final modules with a first batch hopefully going out in June or July. What really excites me about this project is how pioneering it is. Marine rewilding is still in its infancy. There have been many great experiments and tests done, but very few places are doing it at scale. It is a bit of an unknown world. Yet it's one of the biggest ecosystems out there. It's huge and it has a huge impact on our lives and our livelihood and it uh, is also home to a huge amount of biodiversity. So I think getting started with, with projects in the ocean and specifically these kelp forests that are such an important part of the marine ecosystem is really, really exciting. And finally, I would like to say a really big thank you to everyone who has contributed to these projects. And if you're not yet a member, but you find this project exciting and worth supporting, then maybe consider heading over to mossy.earth where you can read more about our work and also become a member. Until next time. Cheers!